go over what I just I came up with off the off the cuff when I was trying to finish up some mastering on a track that I'd uh, been working on, and I was realizing during the mastering process that I was uh, that my drums were just not sitting well in the mix, even after um, the whole track had been uh, exported uh, to to a to a master file, and uh, I needed to go back and and actually completely revamp the drums from the ground up. So I went in and I didn't uh, didn't waste any time getting it uh, completely revamped. Um, and one thing I found while I was looking into it was that there's a lot of people who say that you should um, do parallel compression, which is basically where you have um, a wet, dry signal where part of your drums are going through compression and part of them are not. And uh, that allows you to retain the punch uh, of not having it compressed, um, but also um, gets your loudness level up and uh, makes a much fatter sound uh, with the compression side of things. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, I wanted the way to be able to adjust, uh, kind of tweak the parameters of my compression on the each, uh, individual uh, families of drum sounds. Um, but everything I could find on tutorials were basically doing that to either individual samples uh, or uh, to the entire drum rack. I wanted a little bit of a hybrid of those. So what I did was I designed a chain which has all the families of the different, so you can see here I'm clicking, these are the, this is the kicks. I've got a high kick, mid kick, a low kick, snares, high, mid, and low, symbols, basically symbol-like objects, uh, hats, and crash. And then I've got um, this uh, percussion which is closed hat in the end, there's a little click sound that's, you hear that, but uh, very uh, minimal kind of sound. And I use it to it just um, establish some syncopation in the mix. Um, but, so these are the, basically like a, um, a rack within a rack, right? And then over here, I've got, this is the audio routing out of these things over to a little effects rack underneath here. Now, you trigger that by turning this thing on and off. This is a wet-dry compression. You can see here in this chain, the wet makes it go through the compressor. The dry, there's no audio effect at all. And then I've got the volume the gain for each of these mapped to these knobs here. Those are in turn mapped out here. So if I'm on the kicks um, right now, you will see the, here we go. You'll see the compression. If I turn up the compression over here, I'll actually turn up the wet and turn down the dry. So now we're at zero dB on wet and negative 16 on dry. If I turn it down here, it goes the opposite direction. You can handle all that mapping stuff by going to this map mode thing here. And up here, you can actually specify what you want the mins and maxes on all of these things to be. So after you've mapped from here to here, and then from these guys, you, you map both of them to the same parameter over here. And then once that's mapped, you can go into this map mode thing here and you can, you can change how you want those to. Now, I, I just chose negative 16 and zero because that made the made everything in this mix sit really well, but um, you can tweak those parameters however you want. So this has gotten to the point now where um, the, the mix that I've uh, rendered out is far superior to the one that I had before where the drums were just, it, they were all kind of on the same um, uh, effects path. And so all of them had, and, and that to a certain degree is still the extent to the, uh, still the case. I've got the delays and the reverbs and everything down here that are actually, um, those return tracks are being handled, um, right through up here. And so that is sending the entire, uh, the entire drum channel through those, but that's a much, less pronounced effect than the compression is. And the compression makes a much bigger difference 
in terms of where those sounds sit in the mix. So, um, yeah, this was a huge, huge discovery, and, and uh, I basically couldn't find anybody else out there that had done this already and made a rack, so I just made my own. And um, then I've gone through and color-coded everything. Kicks are all red, snares are all this orange color, the symbols are this cute green color, and then the um, percussions, all the, uh, the paints here. Those are all color-coded over here, too. You'll also notice that in each one of these compression um, channels that I've got the wet and dry labeled with blue and yellow, sort of like, I know, I was going with ocean and sand for wet and dry. Um, let's try to have symbolism of some sort to try to... Mnemonics, they're good for you. Um, so yeah, that's how all that works. And uh, I'm planning on exporting this whole package here and uh, putting it up in a file that can be downloaded and uh, include that along with the YouTube video that I guess I'm going to upload here. <laughs> never saw myself doing these uh, tutorial videos because I never, uh, I hadn't considered myself an expert, but I'm, I'm discovering all kinds of things that I haven't found anybody else doing yet and uh, that are really helpful. So hopefully that was helpful to you, and um, feel free to comment and uh, subscribe. Thanks.